Yishuan, formerly known as Prince Chun, was an imperial prince of the House of Ice in Jioro and a statesman of the Manchu-led Qing dynasty in China. He was the father of the Guangxu Emperor, and the paternal grandfather of Puyi through his fifth son Xiaofeng. Yishuan was born in the Ice and Jioro clan as the seventh son of the Daoguang Emperor. His mother was imperial noble consort Zhuangshun of the Uya clan. Four months after his birth, Lady Uya, a who was recently promoted to noble Lady Lin, was further elevated to the status of imperial concubine Lin, a rare distinction. Lady Uya's rapid rise through the ranks continued, and she was promoted to consort Lin and noble consort Lin in 1842 and 1847 respectively. The Tungji Emperor granted her the posthumous title Imperial Noble Consort Zhuangshan. In February 1850, after the Daoguang Emperor's death, Yixuan's fourth brother, Yizhu, ascended the throne and became historically known as the Shanfeng Emperor. The Shanfeng Emperor made Yixuan a Junwang under the title Prince Chun of the Second Rank. Yixuan kept a low profile in politics throughout the Shanfeng Emperor's 11 year reign. In 1860, by the Shanfeng Emperor's decree, Yixuan married Wan Zhen of the Yehe Nara clan, who was the younger sister of Empress Dowager Qixi, who at that time was one of the Shanfeng Emperor's consorts. The marriage forged a close bond between Yixuan and Empress Dowager Qixi. The Shanfeng Emperor died in August 1861, leaving the throne to his five year old son, Xiaochun, who would reign as the Tungji Emperor. On the Shanfeng Emperor's death, a power struggle emerged over the regency for the Emperor with one faction led by Su Shun, and Princes Duan Wan and Zai Yi Wan, and another faction led by Yixuan's sixth brother. Prince Gong, as well as the Shanfeng Emperor's Empress, honored with the title of Empress Dowager Qian, and noble consort Yi, the mother of the new emperor, honored with the title of Empress Dowager Qixi. In November 1861, Yixuan sided with Prince Gong and the two Dowager Empresses and launched the Xinyo coup to seize the regency from Su Shun and his faction. Yixuan personally led imperial forces to arrest Su Shun and bring him back to Beijing, where he was executed. As a consequence of the Xinyoku, Yixuan found himself elevated to the highest ranks in the imperial court. In the 14-year reign of the Tungji Emperor from 1861 to 1875, he had a dual career in the military and civil services. In 1872, he was promoted from Junwang to a Quinwang, hence he became known as Prince Chun of the First Rank. In 1874, he was dismissed from office by the Tungji Emperor, along with Prince Gong, and several others, due to his involvement in a reprimand of the Emperor for his poor conduct. Only to be reinstated, along with the others, thanks to the intervention of the Dowager Empresses. In January 1875, the Tungji Emperor died without an heir, so Empress Dowager Qixi chose Yixuan's second son, Xiaoshan, to be the new Emperor. Xiaoshan was adopted into the Shanfeng Emperor's lineage, this meant that he was nominally no longer Yixuan's son. As the Shanfeng Emperor's son, Xiaoshan was installed on the throne and became historically known as the Guangxu Emperor. This choice brought advantages to Qixi, Xiaoshan was her nephew, Xiaoshan's father, Yixuan, had been a loyal supporter of Qixi, Xiaoshan was still young so Qixi could continue ruling as regent. As for Yixuan himself, however, Qixi's choice was a catastrophe for him. When he heard that his son had been chosen to be the new emperor, he reportedly hid himself and wept bitterly before sinking into unconsciousness. In the last centuries of imperial China, it was very unusual for an emperor's father to be still alive while the emperor was reigning. The only prior example in the Qing dynasty was that of the situation between 1796 and 1799, when the Qianlong emperor abdicated in favor of his 15th son, the Jiaqing emperor, and became a Taishang Wang. Since filial piety is a highly revered value in Chinese culture, it meant that Yixuan, the biological father of the reigning emperor, would be endowed with the highest honors and privileges. However, Yixuan perceived himself to be in an extremely dangerous and uncomfortable position, given the prickly nature of Empress Dowager Qixi and her obsessional paranoia of any potential threat to her status. The first decision that Yixuan made, after his son became the emperor, was to resign from all his official positions. He tried to keep a low profile but could not avoid being showered with honors and privileges, which he tried to decline as much as possible. Soon after his son became the emperor, Yixuan was awarded the Iron Cap privilege, which meant that he could pass on his Prince Chun title to his descendants without the title being downgraded one grade per generation. In 1876, Yixuan wrote a memorial to the Guangxu Emperor, condemning in advance anyone who would propose to grant him a special position in the hierarchy on the grounds that he was the emperor's biological father. 
Following resignation from his military and civil posts, he was entrusted with the education of the young emperor, to which he consented. In the following years, with the disgrace of his sixth brother Yixin, Yixuan unwillingly became the second most powerful figure in the imperial court after Empress Dowager Qixi. The Empress Dowager even ordered all court officials to discuss matters with Yixuan before making decisions. Empress Dowager Qixi's co-regent, Empress Dowager Qian, died suddenly in 1881 and was rumored to have been poisoned by Qixi. This made Yixuan even more cautious and eager to please Qixi in all possible ways. When the Guangxu Emperor reached adulthood in early 1887 and was ready to take over the reins of power from Empress Dowager Qixi, Yixuan formally requested Qixi to prolong her regency. In 1885, Empress Dowager Qixi appointed Yixuan as controller of the Admiralty, putting him in charge of supervising the building of a new imperial navy. Yixuan was sent on an inspection tour to the naval shipyards on the coast of China. Before her adopted son, Emperor Guangxu, took over the throne in 1889, Qixi wrote out explicit orders that the navy should continue to develop and expand gradually. However, after Qixi went into retirement, all naval and military development came to a drastic halt. Japan's victories over China has often been falsely rumored to be the fault of Qixi. Many believe that Qixi was the cause of the navy's defeat by embezzling funds from the navy in order to build the summer palace in Beijing. However, extensive research by Chinese historians revealed that Qixi was not the cause of the Chinese navy's decline. In actuality, China's defeat was caused by Emperor Guangxu's lack of interest in developing and maintaining the military. His close advisor, Grand Tutor Wang Tongha, advised Guangxu to cut all funding to the navy and army, because he did not see Japan as a true threat. And there were several natural disasters during the early 1890s which the emperor thought to be more pressing to expend funds on. Yixuan died on January 1, 1891, shortly before the enlargement works on the Summer Palace were completed. His fifth son, Xiaofeng, inherited his title Prince Chun of the first rank. Yixuan was granted a posthumous name Shen, so his full posthumous title became Prince Chengxian of the first rank. Tomb of Prince Chun Yixuan was interred in a tomb of princely status, now popularly known as the Seventh Prince's Grave, located 35 km 22 miles northwest of Beijing. According to Puyi's autobiography, a ginkgo tree grew on the tomb of Yixuan, and became very tall and imposing. This fact was reported to Empress Dowager Qixi and greatly alarmed her. In the Chinese language, the first character of the word ginkgo tree is Bei, while the first character of the word emperor is Wang, which combines the character Bei with the character Wang. A ginkgo growing on the tomb of Yixuan was interpreted as a sign that a new emperor would emerge in the house of Yixuan. This was unacceptable for the very superstitious Qixi, as obsessed as ever with thwarting any challenge to her power, and so she promptly had the tree felled. The tomb of Yixuan was restored by the People's Republic of China after 1949 and is now one of the tourist attractions around Beijing. The tomb and surrounding area appears in Quentin Tarantino's 2004 film Kill Bill, Volume 2 as the home and, and training grounds of the legendary Shaolin monk Pai Mei. A former residence of Yixuan, now known as the Prince Chun Mansion, is located near Shichaohai, Beijing. Yixuan's Consorts Consorts and Issue. Thanks for watching.